We're going to start next with the fantastic Sharon Olds. And what I'm trying to do, I was reading the book, I was making quite a few bus trips into Doncaster, and I was reading the book on the bus, and I kept trying to imagine the book as something else, maybe, a, maybe an opera, because the book is called Arias. Then I thought, well, maybe it could, be, it could be a phrase book. It could be a kind of English to poetry phrase book where things you hear are turned into poems. It could be an optician's chart that you take your time with right down to the bottom and you can actually work out what it says. And it could be something, because the poems are so intimate quite often, it could be something written in the steam on a hotel bathroom when you get into the room and it's still there, that writing on the steam. And it could be a message in a hundred bottles that you find, a hundred messages in a hundred bottles, because that's, that's the power of Sharon's intimate and universal work. And then I dropped the book as I was getting off the bus, and somebody shouted, you've dropped your Bible. I thought, blimey. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what Sharon Old's book is. It's a kind of Bible that tells us how to live our lives. So luckily I picked it up, Sharon Old's. I'm so happy here to be with you, to be with you. Oh, thank you. Um, it is a great and sweet honor to be here where uh, the other members of the poetry family who are reading tonight are reading. I'm going to read uh, three poems from Arius. When I had chosen the first one, I felt regret. I thought, oh no, it's just like so science obsessed. And uh, though I am, like many, a child whose parents uh, never spoke to each other again between their divorce and the decades and decades later of their deaths. Um, and so I thought, all right, it's not just science words. And most important, once it had been given to someone who was going to sign it, to translate it back into the body English that it had come from, I didn't want one minute of a signer's time to have been wasted, not one gesture of the dance. Thank you. Thank you. My parents, Ash, oh, oh, I should say two things. One, I'm going to make a, a choice to read some science words as if they were little words in themselves. They're just abbreviations, like ka is carbon, mug is magnesium. So I'm gonna pretend that they're making um, their own language. My parents, Ashes. New York City, October 2001. Maybe they have touched by now. Maybe a grain of my mother's bone, cast in the Pacific a month ago, has glanced along a grain of my father's, loose in the bay for 30 years. Maybe a molecule of her has lain beside a molecule of him or interpenetrated it, an element of her matter bonding to an element of his, sodium on potassium, calcium on magnesium, asa on pelion. Maybe they have even shared an atom together, na, ka, mug, or fe, with its two electrons in the K shell, eight in the L shell, 14 in the M, two in the N, as if they could circle one nucleus, like parents a crib, share an atomic weight, their cold embers conjoining alkali metals with earth metals on the periodic tidal table as the currents carry them back and forth under the Golden Gate. Ashes are the solid residue left when matter is burned at not too high a temperature, 
A molecule is the smallest particle into which a substance can be divided and still have the properties of the original substance. My mother's dust, my father's dust, ghost legs of the spider crab picking its way along the rock sea floor. If the substance were divided further, only atoms would remain. They died old in my arms. The gift of their last breath went into my mouth. They chose for their bodies to be burned at the heat to preserve their grit. They chose the ocean, chose not the weather of the day, but the words said as the gray fur blew from our hands into the cradle of salt, an easy death, and in its way, an easy life. No one they love vaporized, the dream covenants kept. What an easy life I saw that I had had, that I imagined it likely that a person would be born and die in a, in a home bed, living in New York City, September 2001. Um, there was a whole series of families of mourners mm, who I did not know I would think of when I started writing this poem. And this is one called I cannot say I did not. Very um, artful title, I thought. <laughs> Almost experimental. I was so proud of it. <clears throat> I cannot say I did not ask to be born. I asked with my mother's beauty and her money. I asked with my father's desire for his orgasms and for my mother's money. I asked with the cradle my sister had grown out of. I asked with my mother's longing for a son. I asked with patriarchy. I asked with the milk which would well in her breasts, needing to be drained by a little living pump. I asked with my sister's hand-me-downs lying folded. I asked with geometry, with origami, with swimming, with sewing, with what my mind would thirst to learn. Before I existed, I asked, with the love of my children to exist and with the love of their children. Did I ask with my tiny flat lungs for a long portion of breaths? Did I ask with the space in the ground like a portion of breath where my body will rest when it is motionless, when its elements move back into the earth. I asked with everything I did not have to be born. And nowhere in any of it was there meaning. There was only the asking for being, and then the being, the turn taken. I want to say that love is the meaning but I think love may be the means, what we ask with. And I'll close my, my part. So wonderful to be here with all of you and all of you. Mm. Um, I don't know how, how uh, familiar the names of the young, innocent African-American men in America who have been shot and killed by the police in the last few years, how much the names are known uh, here. But I want to um, read this um, here for you. It's called, For You. In the morning, when I'm pouring the hot milk into the coffee. I put the side of my face near the convex pitcher to watch the last round drop from the spout. And it feels like being cheek to cheek with a baby. Sometimes the orb pops back up. 
a ball of cream balanced on a whale's watery exhale. Then I gather the tools of my craft, the cherry sounding board tray for my lap, like the writing arm of a desk, the phone, the bird book for looking up the purple martin. I repeat them as I seek them so as not to forget tray, cell phone, purple martin, tray, phone, Martin, Trayvon Martin. Song was invented for you. All art was made for you. Painting, writing was yours, our youngest, our most precious, to remind us to shield you. All was yours. All that is left on earth with your body was for you.